So there seems to still be a lot of people interested in direct drive solutions for the Elegoo Neptune 2 series of 3D printers, and with good reason. The Neptune 2 was and still is one of the best printers Elegoo has ever made, in my opinion. It's a perfect mix of both an out-of-the-box performer and a tinkerer's playground. That being said, I wanted to try and review a low-priced and fairly easy-to-install direct drive solution, so I reached out to UPI, who were kind enough to send me this Creality Sprite SE direct drive extruder. I had such great luck with my Creality eFit on my Neptune 3 that I couldn't wait to try Creality's latest offering in the $40-ish direct drive range. The Sprite SE offers a 3.5 to 1 gear ratio direct drive setup for added torque when pushing filament into the hot zone, in a setup that can be mounted in multiple ways, using the provided mounting holes on both the extruder body as well as the stepper motor itself. Inside the box, there is the extruder assembly, two straight wired E-axis motor cables, a machined metal mounting bracket, a piece of Capricorn tube to complete the installation, some zip ties for keeping everything neat and tidy, and a set of spacers that are actually shorter than your normal POM wheel spacers that are designed to kind of sandwich the mounting plate in between the spacer and the x-axis carriage. The Sprite SE could be ordered with a couple of different mounting options and it just includes a different mounting plate that can vary based on the model of Ender that you own. But in my case, I'll be designing one for the Neptune 2, so it didn't matter which one they sent me. So I went and printed my first prototype using the Ender 3 V3 SE with the same red Kinlawatt filament that I've had in there for a while. And so far, it looks like it's going to fit. It snaps into place nicely. Everything seems to line up. I used the assembly model from the Elegoo website to design this, but then found out that the model on the Elegoo website is not right. They actually changed the design of the x-axis carriage to be these 45 degree chamfers here. And on the CAD model, it kind of has this swooping kind of look to it. So it didn't quite match up, so I had to do some remeasuring and stuff like that so hopefully this fits i'm going to take everything apart and find out okay so the first thing that i want to do is i want to make sure that i've got my motor phases correct based on the pins that are coming off of here now these are a six pin connector but there's only four pins that get used but they come in pairs so you've got an a phase and a b phase and i did do a video on this a while back so i'm trying i'm not rehashing it but it's useful to know you have to know how to do this because if you go and attach a motor cable and you don't have the phases correct the motor's just gonna sit there and go uh, 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 and it's not gonna do anything and then you're gonna be wondering well what what the hell do i do now so this is what you do if you have a multimeter and you just set it up to resistance double check it by hitting the leads together and you can see that it beeps and then what you'll do is you just sit there and just test the pairs so you go here on one pin pin next to it nope pin next to that nope pin next to that there you go so i've got this pin here and this pin here are the one phase and then you start from the other side go here nope nope there it is so the two pins in the middle and the two pins on the outside but the center pins here are backwards so you got one and then one two three here and then one and then one two three here which tells me that straight cable i'm going to have to swap two of these in order to crisscross them to match up with the configuration that i have on my neptune 2. now it's time to disassemble the tool head and make way for the bracket to get mounted with the spacers that they provide here i'm just loosening the wheels and removing the tool head and then once the tool head is off of the gantry i can completely remove the wheels and get ready to mount the new spacer And the first iteration isn't really that bad of a fit. There is a little bit of an air gap at the bottom and the angle isn't quite right. I think it's 50 degree and I chose 45. And you can kind of see the same thing on the outer edges. It kind of sticks up in the very corners. 
and I'll rectify that in the next iteration. So now it's just a matter of putting the wheel spacers on, reattaching the wheels, and putting the tool head back onto the gantry. And now at this point, I have to cut the zip ties and remove the Bowden tube that goes into the hot end so I can mount the extruder to the plate. And then once that's all assembled, I can start testing out the wiring. Don't try this at home, kids. So you can see right here, I've got my wires connected just as a test. I've got green, blue, white, and yellow going into green, white, blue, and yellow because as I mentioned before, the center pins are backwards they're not next to each other like you would see here. They're actually twisted. So the white one goes to green, the blue one goes to yellow. So from here, I should be able to do a test and I have to enable cold extrusion or whatever the hell they call it in Clipper. And then I should be able to test it out or I have to bring the hot end up to temperature, which I am in a pretty compromised position right now and I kind of don't want to move anything. So I'll just do it that way so I'll heat up the extruder okay so we're up to temperature I've got it set for five millimeters of extrusion at two millimeters per second so I'll hit extrude and the motors going back and forth I don't know why oh there we go it's working now I just didn't have the wires in all the way they're not making good contact so it is extruding, it's turning the gears. I'm not sure if it's turning the right way. So I'm gonna to have to put a piece of filament in here and then do an extrusion that way and see if I can get something to come out. And luckily I have some filament right next to me. I, I, it's, it's hard to explain where I am. I'm tucked away in the corner next to the machine, to the left of the machine. And the only way I have to hold my camera is this tripod and the tripod is not the smallest thing in the world. I'm just going to cut off a little piece of this. I'll feed it into here. Okay. Now we should be able to see five millimeters of extrusion. All right, it's coming out. The steps aren't set right, so it's not going to be a full five millimeter, but it is turning in the right direction. So that means that my theory was correct. I just have to crisscross the two center wires and everything else just wires in straight. So what I have to do now is I just have to pull a couple of pins out of this cable and then just swip swap them like I did in my previous videos. Okay, so I shortened the Bowden tube a little bit so that it clears inside of here when it comes up. It's probably in the same general spot that it was originally. I do plan on going with the top bracket eventually, but for right now, I'm just going to run it through just the way you see it. And I switch the wires i don't know if i can get up there we go you can see i crisscrossed the two centers i have the machine off right now I'm going to plug in this side to the motor i'll plug this side into the original extruder cable when everything's tucked in the right way and zip tied i've got plenty of travel fore and aft and I'll do the same thing. I'll just bring it up to temperature and then I'll try an extrusion. And then I will do the rotary distance setting, which should mimic the Ender 3 V3, at least for testing purposes. If I wanted to do an E-step, if you will, there's no E-steps in Clipper. It's rotary distance. So that's the whole thing. But if I wanted to do an actual extrusion test, what I would do is basically just take the extruder off of here, use the base point right here as my gauge point, extrude 100 millimeter and then measure it like you would normally would, but you just have to remove the extruder from the assembly. And then looking at it from over here, you could actually see that it lines up surprisingly well for a first rough draft, if you will. But from the looks of it, if I drop this angle one millimeter down this way, It'll fill in that gap a little bit better. And like I said, if I go 50 degrees instead of 45, I think that'll tighten in these corners and it'll tighten in these outer points here a little bit better too. So now I'm up to temperature. So I'll go extrude 10 millimeter at five. It seems to be spinning the right way as it was before. And now I just have to set the rotary distance. Okay, so one thing that I did do off camera is I'll point this down 
I made a macro called extrude four inches. And when I hit that button, it does a cold extrude at four inches. Right now it's running at 20 millimeters a second, which might be a little too quick for the test, but we'll see how that goes. So I'm just going to unbolt this. So now I'll just take that filament that I had before, find the business end of it. Now what you want to do is you want to have it so that this little end here is flush with here. So if I stuck this out a little further, I can take the snips and I can just do a clean cut right here. And now it's flush with the end of the extruder. I'll do my calibrate four inches. And now all I do is measure from this end to here. I have to make sure that I pull it straight. I have my caliper set to four inches and it looks like we're right on the money. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but it looks like it's pretty much on the money right there. So I'll leave that set the way it is and I'll run a test print. Okay, so the first prototype isn't working out so well. You can see the extruder bouncing as it's doing the infill. That's not quite what I was hoping for, but so far it seems like it's okay. It just needs to be reinforced a little bit. So let me go back to the drawing board and see what I could do. So the next design is pretty much the same as the original, with the exception of these two reinforcement ribs that I printed onto the back. In theory, these should help quite a bit. So this next iteration does work out better. It bounces very slightly under extreme retraction rates, but other than that, it works out pretty well. I apologize for the potato quality. I grabbed this off of Facebook Messenger. All right, so apologies if I sound a little nasally and, and weird. I, I tested positive for COVID this morning, but the show must go on. So here's the latest iteration. Instead of using the enforcement ribs, I went with a thicker design overall. And I put these counter bores in here where the spacers go and printed this out with five walls, which gives it a little bit more rigidity, well, in theory, gives it a little bit more rigidity in this direction. Because instead of just using the bottoms of the counter bores, instead of just using here, this, you know, this back face, it's using the walls because of the press fit of the spacers to hold it in place better. So let's put this on and see what she do. Here you can tell right away that the new bracket fits perfectly into place and the extra thickness coupled with the press fit of the spacers into the counter bores makes the setup extra rigid. I'm very happy with the results of the printed part and overall the extruder looks like a solid performer, which I kind of knew already because I've been using the same exact extruder on my Ender 3 V3 for the last couple of weeks and I've been very happy with that. And you can see here that the print results are very good. I'm using the same pressure advanced settings on the Neptune 2 that I have on my Ender 3 V3 SE, and I haven't really dialed that in. And I also haven't dialed in resonance tuning, but overall the print came out perfectly fine. The top surfaces look good, the sidewalls look nice, and that's pretty much all you could ask for. So my takeaways for the Creality Sprite SE are that, as we all know, direct drive extruders are great for expanding the material range of your printer due to the shorter path the filament has to travel between the extruder and the hot end, which allows you to run softer filament because there's less drag in the extrusion path than that of a Bowden setup. The extra torque of the gear reduction is better for higher speed printing because you'll be able to exert more force on the filament before the motor decides to just give up and start skipping on you. In the case of non-creality printers, the Sprite SE will require a custom bracket, but printed parts will work as long as you design them to be rigid enough to handle the forces exerted by the drive gears and stable enough to keep the unit from bouncing around. Do keep in mind that the wiring to the motor will be different depending on the brand of printer you have, and it's best to make sure you bench test everything before trying to connect the wires and hope for the best. There is a potential that you could burn out your motor or driver if you don't have the phases wired correctly, so do be careful. And the Sprite SE is priced well and is a very solid performing direct drive extruder, so much so that it's being widely used on Creality's newest lineup of machines as standard. So that's just good for a little peace of mind knowing that Creality stands behind it enough to actually use it in production. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, throw it a thumbs up. If you're one of the 90% of people that haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. 
And if you know somebody who'd be interested in this type of content, share it with a friend because sharing is caring. Check out my affiliate links in the description down below at no additional cost to you. Just puts a little bit of catnip into my kitty and it helps my future channel endeavors. If you're on that cesspool that is Facebook, join the group. Elegoo Neptune Series 3D Printers Mods, Tweaks, and Improvements, where we offer 24-hour live chats and community support, do the occasional giveaway, and blatantly abuse the everyone tag. If you got 30 seconds to burn, check out my website, www.theferalengineer.com. It's just a whole bunch more of the same stuff, but it justifies the 12 bucks a year I spend on the URL. And once again, thank you to all of my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Uh, 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 uh.